Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. What we're going to talk about today is how routers get the information to different points on the internet. Because my computer is just one place on the internet, and the internet is this vast resource of lots of computers out there. How do I get through that sea from my computer to the computer that I'm trying to get to? So, I'm going to do a real quick example here. Um, I want to load a web page, because over here, this is Google. And I'm going to go to http colon slash slash google.com. I'm going to go to it from my computer. Now, my computer is connected to a router. A router is a device that routes requests from computer to computer through the network. So I would type in my address up here, and it's going to find a DNS server somewhere out here in the internet and it's going to transform google.com to the IP address for Google, which is 74.125.224.72. Now, this is just one IP address of Google, but this is my destination, and I'm sending it from my laptop, which is safe behind my router so that internet baddies can't get in to me. Only the things that I want to come in will come in. So, my from as it is right now, is probably going to start 192.168. This is one of those safe internet addresses that we talked about before. So I'm 192.168.0.3. And I'm going to send an IP packet to my router through this same pipe. So my router is going to have to find a route. So the first thing that it does is it tries to find Google 74.125.224. Dot 72 somewhere out in the hinterland and it's going to find some path out to my internet service provider and then my internet service provider is going to connect to all of the people that it knows and it's going to try and find some morass some long chain that will eventually connect to Google. It may take 10 or 20 or 30 hops for this to happen depending on where I am out in the internet. But keep in mind that according to my ISP, this is no longer my address. My address is not 192.168.0.3. It just knows that everything on this side of the internet is 192.168.0. something. But where my ISP is concerned, my actual interconnection is something like 66.25.137.65. Uh, that's where my computer is, because that's the IP address that my internet service provider gave me. So my destination is still 74.125.224.72, because I'm still trying to get to Google. This is still my two, but as far as my ISP is concerned, my from address really is the 66.25.137.65. This is the IP address of my router, and my router is going to get my information back to me. Now, my ISP is a router, and it's connected to other routers, and it's going to try and find the best path that it can to Google. It, it may take, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 hops to do it, and they're constantly searching for a more efficient path. Or if all of a sudden, you know, there's a lot of congestion and this path isn't convenient anymore, it'll find alternate routes. It'll find backup routes. My router finds a route. All routers find a route. And so what happens is eventually I'm out in the internet hinterland. So here's my ISP and here's a path to one router. Here's a path to another router. Here's a path to another router. And this eventually gets to Google. This is my 74.125.224. Dot 72. It eventually gets here and Google receives my request. It receives this packet that says to this IP address and from me, 66.25.137.65. And so Google gets this information along with some data. So I get web, please. Whatever my request is for a web page on Google's server. So now that Google has our destination, now Google says, oh, they want a web page. So it's going to send an IP packet back. It's going to be to our address, the 66.25.137.65. .65. 
and it's going to be from Google, which is 74.125.224.72. And so it's going to say, hey, here's your page, whatever data I get, and it's going to ship this out back into the interland. It's going to go to its service provider, which is going to connect to its connection of routers. And, you know, it may find one path, it may find two paths, but it's going to have to find some way back to our router. So I've got this data that's going out to here, out to here, out to here, out to here. And finally, it reaches me. This is my router. This is my 65, excuse me, my 66.25.137.65. But this only gets it to my router. This is a box in my house. This is not my laptop. So I'm going to need to find some other way to get here. And my router goes, oh wait, this is to this place. And from, I remember sending something to 74.125.224.72. I think the computer that was at 192.168.0.3 is the one that wants it. I'm gonna send it to it. And it sends that information to me. Knowing of course, two things. One, that it requested something from this IP address, and therefore it's expecting something from that IP address. The thing that it sent was something that was expecting a return. At this point, this router and Google's router has a path in mind, actually has several paths in mind. One path that it can follow and some backup paths in case the first path doesn't work out. So this is my return trip, and now my router has a present for me. It says, hey, you remember how you wanted that thing from Google? Well, your 192.168.0.3, I have a present for you. And it gets put up here, and I see Google showing up on my screen. So now I can actually enter in a search query. So it's a long convoluted path that actually takes about a second in real time from my computer to my home internet router, to my ISP's router, to the internet, which eventually leads to Google, and then they return the gift out of Google to its internet path, back to my ISP, back to my router, back to my computer, all in about a second. So it's really amazing how the internet works and the fact that it can work so fast, making these jumps, making these circuits come through in the blink of an eye. So what we're going to do in our uh, studio is we're going to test this out. So I am actually on a router right now. Let me go ahead and disconnect from the router real quick and show you what we've got here. I'm gonna move this over a bit. So I have a collection of routers. TDP is on one of them. I'm gonna hit join. And notice that I have an IP address. I have 1.1. .1. And TDP has an IP address that's 1.10. You may recall in our previous examples, we had situations where if I type something into my message box, it would be broadcast to everyone. And we'll talk more about broadcasting in a later video. But right now, I don't want to send it to everyone. I really want to send it to 1.10. And I want to say, hello, you. And I'm going to go ahead and here click send. And it's going to send a message to that computer. And it's got that message. So now it wants to send a return message to 1.1. So I'm going to do that real quick on this other computer. And I'm going to say, hello back. And so now I've got this message, hello back, to my IP address 1.1 from their IP address 1.10. Now, a couple of things that I wanna bring up here. If I disconnect and then try and rejoin the router, because I'm rejoining the router, I'm gonna get a different IP address. Notice that I've got 1.12. And that means that if I wanna get a new message, my friend over here has to know that my new IP address has changed. It's no longer 1.1, it's now 1.12. Secondly, what I can do is I can actually send messages to other routers. Let me move this over again 
Because the thing is, I have my device, which I can see in different things. But I can also send messages to other routers. I just need to know the IP address on that router, which is something that I can actually look up. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting together in your battleship groups and you're going to experiment sending messages to a select person, not necessarily broadcasting to everyone, but just sending messages to select people on your router and also sending select messages to people on other routers. So that's your task. That's what you're going to be working on. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.